today we're looking at this power supply kit from eBay. Its claim to fame is that it has dual outputs of plus and minus voltage and it also has speaker protection circuitry here. I must say the kit took a very long time to get here but it was extremely well packed and nothing appears to be damaged or broken in any way. For some reason there are three components pre-soldered on the board. Now I don't really know why because I can understand if they were very small surface mount or something but there are two resistors pre-soldered -pre and one diode. This is the reverse of the board and there's not much I can say about it except it's been designed by LJM who seems to be responsible for a lot of the better kits available from China. The board is very well made and good areas of copper where it needs to be. These are the main smoothing capacitors. Not sure of the brand but they're 50 volt 6800 microfarad. Now they look nicely made. The only thing they haven't got which is uh, I wouldn't say a worry but um, there's no obvious venting tops that a lot of them have is like an X on the top which can lift if the capacitor gets a bit unhappy but um, well like the same at the bottom there's no venting holes at all here. This is the main bridge rectifier with a claimed 16 amp rating. Six small transistors which are CA18 I think. C1815. Not sure what they are at this stage but we'll have a look presently. An LM317 which is a 17 volt regulator which is used for the speaker protection circuitry as were the transistors in fact. It also has this very small heat sink which is almost useless but I suspect that it's only going to supply probably 50 or 60 milliamps for the relays so extra cooling probably won't be required. A few more diodes which again in fact all of these components other than the main bridge rectifier the large capacitors and um, a few resistors and other bits and pieces are all for the speaker protection circuitry and a nice array of reasonable quality capacitators oh I nearly forgot the LED got to have an LED a green one this time a little array of resistors, a couple of relays which are unusual in that they are 9 volt coils on them. Almost last we have two fuses in the appropriate holders, a very nice feature which is missing for many kits. These are the terminal blocks which are fair quality. Anyway I'm going to start assembling this now and I shall report back if I find anything horrible or anything that I might think is interesting to you. Before we get started I'm going to test every component to make sure they are okay and then the reason being of course if it shouldn't work I know it's probably my fault and not a faulty component so I'll get on now and test all the components. I just thought I'd show you this. I'm in the point of soldering in the main capacitors and if I get the angle right you can see that the terminals only stick through the PCB very slightly. It looks quite a lot on the video because I'm close up but um, really they need to be a bit longer than that and they're quite loose in the hole and because they're so narrow you can't really bend them so that they would touch the sides of the PCB so 
the only thing I can do really is to flood the hole and around that area with solder. The terminals only stick through a millimetre or so, which is, well, I, I like to push the terminals through and bend them over so there's a secure fixing before I solder it. But these are not, it's not possible to bend them over at all. Um, I thought initially they might have been removed from something, but looking at the terminals closely, I don't think that's the case. I'm, I'm fairly sure they're, they're new, it's just the way they're designed. Well, the board is 99% finished, insofar as all the components are soldered on. The only other thing, of course, I've got to do before we apply power is to check with the magnifying glass to make sure there's no solder bridges and of course deflux the board. Now I have to say that all went together absolutely perfectly apart from my reservations on the soldering connections on the large capacitors. I don't think that's going to be an issue but it's just a little niggle that I, I feel that the terminal should be a little bit longer. All the transistors are the same. I tested them all and they all are within about 5% of each other. Well I've done my inspection and uh, I've not found any faults at all, uh, visual faults anyway, but whether it be electrically faulty we shall find out. Um, to test this I've just got my usual mouse trap and a 15 naught 15 transformer. Now as I'm not going to be drawing any significant current at this stage I'm just using this small transformer which is about 200 milliamps rating. So we're going on here on the AC which is 15 naught 15 and I've got the test meter which I'll bring into camera in a minute and we're just going to see what the DC output is. I will be expecting about 25 volts something like that or lots of smoke I'm not sure which at this stage. Now, in case you're not familiar with what's going on here, apart from the fact it is the standard AC to DC unstabilized supply, we also have on here a speaker protection circuit, which I've used varieties of this in the past on most of my amplifier projects. And it's what it simply is, it gives you a delay of about two to three seconds. I haven't timed this one yet. And it also looks out for DC on the output speaker terminals. Now clearly there won't be any DC because it's not connected to any amplifiers. But when I apply power, you'll see the LED flashes, which means it's basically looking around for faults. And if it doesn't find any, it will go on to steady state and if you're lucky you'll hear the two relays here click in. So we'll apply power now. LED is doing its thing and click and that's when the power would be connected to the amplifier. One rather odd thing that I found is it states on the advertisement that the switch on module which is basically this piece with this regulator requires 12 to 15 volts AC. Now I, when I went to connect this up I was looking along the terminals here to see where this, this AC goes in and there's no terminals so it, what it says isn't strictly true what it means is it picks up the voltage from the main supply which is here and takes it down and regulates it to about 17 volts well not about 17 volts with this regulator so that regulator has got to do quite a bit of work bearing in mind you could have about 40 volts plus and minus it and because there's no circuit diagram given um, I don't know whether this takes it across the two supplies or whether it just takes it off one side. Now, I think it must just take it off one side because otherwise you've got about an 80 volt 
supply going into a 17 volt uh, regulator which is going to make it well I think that exceeds its rating to be honest I think you can only put about 30 volts in anyway we haven't got enough volts at the moment to try it because the maximum I can put in as a dual voltage on this is 15 naught 15 because I've actually been waiting for a transformer from Farnell or whatever they're called these days element 14 for the last month and um, I thought this took a long time coming but to be fair Farnell did say they were out of stock and they expect some more mid-November well it's the 13th of November today so we're very close to the mid of November so once we get that we will then be able to test this properly coming up as they say in all the worst American crappy TV shows, you may be wondering why I've built this. Um, well, there is a reason. If you watch my channel regularly, and if you do, thank you very much, you'll remember I started to build a, a preamp a while back and made a complete cock up of the um, metalwork. Well, I've resurrected that and I'm going to build myself uh, a, a, an amplifier surprise surprise uh, to be used with my main computer on in the video editing side of it at the moment I've got a rather nasty Shaw class D amplifier um, which I might show you later on because it's quite an interesting thing but anyway it's got to go so um, the next video will show you what I've put inside this but in the meantime here's a quick teaser well this is it um, all handheld camera this I'm sorry about this but it's not like me is it to do that but I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse inside and that's all I'm going to show you